Hi, I want to give you a quick introduction to snapshot testing in Rust with Insta. So the idea here is that instead of using assert equals, you use a snapshot searching function and Insta helps you manage the reference value automatically through a tool called Cargo Insta. What we want to do here is have a little library that can um, transform text and does it in a way where it will basically just destroy the text a little bit. Um, and we want to um, show some of the advantages and disadvantages of snapshot testing. So for starting, we just um, convert the string <coughs> without any changes. And we're going to add a very test, simple test function, um, which just uses the regular assert function um, to see if the string matches a reference value. And so here you can already see that we need to provide the reference value. And if we run the test here, uh, you can see the test fails because the reference value is not the empty string. And so let's change this over to Insta assert snapshot. This is working quite similar to um, assert EQ. Obviously, it requires us to add the Insta dependency. But the difference is that Insta manages the reference value for us. So let's change the function to actually do modification. So let's do two uppercase here for a test. And then we add the add prefix on the reference value on the right side. Now, if we run cargo insta test, you can see that um, it says there is one snapshot to review. Now we can run cargo insta review, and we can see that it now picked up this uh, snapshot. With A, we can accept it. And then if we change the function to say, for instance, goodbye, and we rerun the test, and we can also use cargo insta test dash dash review to do it in one go. Um, we can see that the value has changed. That gives us a diff. And again, we can accept the change. And with it back to the editor, we can see that it changed um, the start string to the new change. So now we want to do something that's a little bit more useful. Um, we're going to actually implement our wobbly text function. And so the idea here is that we are going to use um, a pseudo random number generator uh, with a fixed seed to predictably change um, how our string gets um, modified. So I'm going to use the uh, rand and rand chacha create here. I'm going to create a new random number generator with a fixed seed. And then we're going to iterate over all of the characters in the string. And depending on the outcome of the random number generator, we're either going to convert it into uppercase or we're going to convert it into lowercase. And this is a pretty good example for why snapshot testing is useful, because if you were to change the seed, everything is going to change. Um, but the essence of what's happening is, is still the same. And the diffing functionality of a snapshot testing tool is very useful here to figure out uh, if the changes are actually reasonable or not. So if we are going to now run um, the snapshot, then we can see it fails because obviously the output has changed. Or we can accept it now. And if we run it again, of course, um, because it's predictable, it's still going to be the same. Now let's add another thing where if we run a small chance, then we want to replace the character entirely by um, a fixed number, fixed character. And so we can see here, and it's going to check affect the output output again. So in this case, it's the wrong way around. So let's just fix this um, to be smaller. So some characters are now going to be replaced with an underscore. So this is the starting point of our little experiment here. So the next thing we can do is we can now try to make this into a more real world case and refactor the code so that we can customize um, the seed, the but, um, the probabilities and stuff like this. So we're going to create here uh, a new option struct with all of the parameters. Then we're going to pass them to our function. And the idea is that we can make like a mock um, web API here and to show some of the powers of snapshot testing. So first we are going to define um, the defaults for these options. And so in this case, we're just going to take the same numbers that we had hard coded earlier. So the same seed value, um, same chance for a replacement character, the same replacement character. Then we're going to change the function to take these options. 
and then we're going to fill in the values from the option struct. Um, and if we now um, change our test to uh, pass options, so we're going to pass some options here, and we're going to just use the default options, nothing should really change because um, we really just refactored the code. So if we run the tests again, you can see that they are passing and nothing's actually there to review. Now the idea is that we're actually going to build a mock web API around. Um, so we're going to use Serdi here for the input and output values. And Serdi is also the library which we're using um, in Insta for the snapshot serialization. And we also want to use the derive feature here, which is very useful um, to make our own structs. And then we can also use Serdi JSON. Uh, this is what our web API is going to use. And we're also going to use the UID crate. Um, I want to demonstrate a specific feature of Insta here um, that has to do with random numbers. So we're going to use the V4 feature of UID here. And so the idea is that we're going to create a new uh, struct here, um, which represents our request and response. Um, and so we're just going to derive uh, serialize and deserialize on our options. So the idea is that you can provide these options for a web API request. Um, and now we're just going to wait and see it built. And now that this works, we can create our request and response object. Create our new struct to hold um, the input request. So we're going to call it mobile request. And again, we derive uh, serialize and deserialize. Uh, so uh, input request has uh, a UUID. I just want to demonstrate how this works. Uh, this is going to be a random number by default. And so this would really mess up our snapshots. Um, so we're going to see how to fix that. And then we're going to have the options that the client provides, uh, which is again, the same default uh, struct that we had before. Uh, so it's the wobbly options and then the input string that uh, we want to transform. And then we're going to create a response object as well. And the response again has a ID on it, and it also has an output string, which is the transformed one. And now we can effectively create this uh, API request handler. It takes the wobble request, it returns a wobble response, and internally it just calls into our utility method. So it returns the response with the same ID, and the output is going to be the transformation of the input string and with the request input options. So let's see if this compiles. And now we can make a simple test for this. So we make a new uh, test function for our API. We're going to create uh, a web request here, and then we're going to assert the snapshot um, of JSON format to match this web request. So we call the Wobbly API with um, our request, and then we're just going to assert the output. And what we are going to pass into this request is a random UUID. We're going to pass the default options because we don't care about much more for now, and hello world again as our input string. And here we need to use um, a macro, of course, and we can run this. And here we can see uh, this is a random UUID. So if we accept the snapshot and run it again, it's mismatching because the UUID changed. So one of the features of Insta is to allow redactions. So here we can say that we match on the field ID and we're going to replace it with the hardcoded string UUID. So if we run it again, uh, we can see they get an error because Insta was not compiled with reduction support. So we have to turn on this feature um, by going to our cargo terminal and add reductions as feature. I'm also going to turn on the glob feature, which we are going to use later. So if I run this again, we can see that the output is now changed with a static string. And if I run it again, of course, uh, the tests still pass. So it's pretty ideal. And you can also see that the snapshot has actually been stored in a separate file instead of in the file. So if you don't provide a reference value um, into the macro, it just stores in a separate file. Now we can also make um, a new folder with a bunch of inputs. Um, and then we're going to apply one snapshot for each input. So I'm going to make a simple HTTP request 
um, of course, JSON encoded. That's our input format. So we're going to say hello world here for our input again. And now we can, can go back to our test and we can change it slightly. So we're going to use the glob macro to go over all the input files in the snapshot input folder that are JSON files. And then we can use, uh, can move this code in here. And then we can use set a JSON to load the input file. So we just um, parse to a popular request by using set a JSON from slice. And we're going to use uh, fs read to open the uh, input file. And we're just going to ignore all the errors. And then we're going to pass the request directly. And we still going to keep our redaction. So I just have to fix up the syntax. And now we can run the tests and it will run them against the input file that we had in our folder. So here you can see now that the snapshot uh, is actually uh, an input file and we can see that it applied this hello world. And so this is the input now that is being used and we can make a second one where we um, change now, for instance, one of the options. So we can change it to have a different replacement character and a different chance. So in this case, 100% of all cases should error, except we need to fix um, a small bug here that the default uh, is not loaded if it's not provided. So now it should work. And we can see now that the 100% of characters have been replaced with this replacement character. So let's make this chance a little bit lower and also change the replacement character. So let's see first how it looks like. And if we want to use a different replacement character, we can do so. And so if we now rerun the test, we can see that um, this is the difference from before. If we add more text to the input, you can also easily see um, how this is changing from one run to another. So you can see it's very nice to iterate on these input files. Um, so really useful this whole thing gets if I now change the seed because now everything is going to change. But because I can easily go in and review all of my changes, I can see how this change is now applying to all of the three snapshots that we have. And I can review them individually. And this is a basic introduction to Insta snapshot testing. If you're curious, yeah, you can download the crate on crates.io. Um, there's documentation available and the code is on GitHub. If you want to use the Cargo Insta tool that was used here, um, you can also directly install it with Cargo install Cargo Insta, and it's going to give you uh, improved um, test experience.